Yeah, I pre-ordered one. So yeah, basically decided I'm going back to Android as my next smartphone. Um, there's actually been a little bit of a story behind this one, so please bear with me if you can. Um, basically, I've been looking at new smartphones on the market. It's the usual time to upgrade, about every two years or so. And I was looking at um, the new iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. Um, while I was looking, I was comparing it to my current phone, which is, move that way, which is an iPhone 6S Plus. Now, don't get me wrong, the iPhone 6S Plus has been a fantastic phone for me. Um, it's just that when they announced the iPhone 7, I didn't really see it as much different, so I avoided that one. So I decided to wait until the iPhone 8 was announced. And then when I looked at it, it wasn't that much different to the iPhone 7, apart from the fact they've added in wireless charging and made it a little bit faster. Okay. And then when they announced the iPhone 10 or iPhone X, as people have been calling it, it didn't even interest me. Not even slightly. I mean, yes, it had a nice bezel-less screen. It had the notch cutout, which I, I guess to some wouldn't have been too much of an issue, I, I presume. But to me, it would have really bothered me. It wouldn't look symmetrical. It wouldn't look uniform to me. So I avoided that one as well. Plus the fact that there has been a little bit of rumour going around that they're going to stop production of the iPhone X. So why would I want to buy a phone that they're just going to end production on uh, at some point? What's the, what's the point? So I decided I wanted to move back to Android. Now, I did have Android device in the past, so I was a little bit sceptical, but then I've been seeing the most recent uh, phones been coming out, and I thought, do you know what? I think I might go back to it. So I was having a look, and one of the phones that was uh, announced, I'll put that away now, um, was the Google Pixel 2 XL. And I actually wanted a bigger phone, because that's the plus version, as I said, and I do prefer the bigger screen, the bigger real estate. And the Pixel 2 XL did interest me because it was a stock Android. It, there was no bloatware, there was no um, fancy flim flam bits and pieces here and there. So I had a look at that. I even held one in a local shop. Um, and do you know what, I actually really liked it. I liked how it felt in the hand, I liked the screen, I like the fact that it was just a stock Android experience and that really, I seem to be have my heart set on that one. But then I've been looking at recent rumors about the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, which is what this one is. So I decided to wait until the Galaxy S9 smartphones were officially announced. And that's when I made my choice. When they were announced, at the uh, Galaxy Unpacked event, which I watched live, uh, and I actually really wanted to know what it was going to be like, I had my mind set. So I pre-ordered the Plus version. And as I said, I like the larger screen real estate. So, this is going to be quite different, because as I said, I'm going f I went from Android to iOS and back to Android again. So I hope the experience is going to be smooth. That's what I'm hoping. But anyway, let's get to the actual... Uh, unboxing I guess. So this is the S9 Plus and it has 128 gigabytes in of internal storage which is a huge huge amount. Uh, this is also the midnight black version as I do prefer uh, the black smartphones it looks just neat to me. So specs wise we have uh, the 6.2 inch screen which is which quad which is quad HD and S AMOLED so basically the pixel density and the colors are gonna be super sharp and super bright and vibrant, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, it's got a super speed dual 12 megapixel camera. One is a telephoto lens and the other is the world renowned dual aperture lens, which uh, I'm trying to read upside down, uh, which can flip between uh, f1.5, which doesn't, which is basically like how uh, the human eyes are have really small pupils, so it lets a little bit of light in, uh, right up to f2.4, which allows more light in at lower light levels. Uh, it also has a super slow-mo function, which is the famous uh, 960 frames per second, but it's only 720p, so you need a lot of light to make it look clear. 
Uh, it also has an 8 megapixel front facing camera and they have actually call, called it a selfie camera. Okay, uh, speakers, the speakers and incidentally the headphones are tuned by AKG which are owned by Harman which is owned by Samsung so they recently acquired uh, Harman and AKG so they've implemented their speaker technology into the phones and their listening devices. Uh, it's also IP68 rated which is what I was looking for because the Pixel 2 XL was an IP67 which is pretty good but this is IP68 which is slightly better and as for the iPhone 6S Plus, um, yeah, it doesn't have one, as far as I know. So this is why I wanted to go on to this one. It has an iris scanner. The, there's the 128 gigabytes of storage with 6 gig of RAM. This is only on the Plus version. If you get the standard size one, it comes with 4 gig of RAM. But there is also a micro SD slot in here, which I'm going to expand with one of these. So I'm adding a 256 gigabyte SD card to a 128 gigabyte phone, making 384 gigabytes of data, which is huge amounts of data. I'm not going to use it all, but it's nice to know that it's there. It also has wireless charging built in, which was a standard feature on the previous versions of the Galaxy, and it's only just in been introduced, of course, to the iPhones. Um, why? And of course, it's secured by Knox, so which is the which is Samsung's own security system. So, let's actually get into this. Now, I did actually open this up before. Only reason I wanted to do that was because I wanted to make sure that everything was there because I was a little bit worried about pre-ordering such device, but let's just hope I've made the right decision, as I said. So, you get a really nice presentation. So you open it up and Instead of greet, the phone greeting you to start with, uh, we actually have what looks like a guide and I think the SIM tools in this one. Yeah, there's the SIM tool in there, which is the eject pin. And you get the quick start guide. I don't know what the code is. I think it's the serial number for the phone. And speaking of which, there it is. The Pixel, no, Pixel? What am I on about? The Galaxy S9 plus holy moly i still can't believe that this is the phone i'm going to be using for ages i love the metal finish of the metal bands i really really love that so i can't wait to get into that so let's get the little cover thing out i'll put that back in there for the time being just while i get to the other accessories so here we can see a couple of other bits in here so we have what looks like what is this? Uh, this is the USB connector. Now, this is so you can transfer all your data for messages, pictures, and other bits from one phone to the other, which of course has a USB type C connector. Oh, I'll get to the connectors on the actual phone in a second. So we have that. We also have a USB C to micro USB connector. So if you have an old charger or an old micro USB cable, you can still uh, use that, I guess. This is the adaptive fast charging uh, charger. So there's a USB connection. It is the three prong UK uh, plug, which folds in very nicely. Now I was actually a little bit worried that when I pre-ordered this, I, wor I was worried that it wasn't going to include that. So just as a precaution, I did actually pick up uh, one of these Anker PowerPort Plus One uh, chargers, which to be honest, I'm going to say this, Anker are a fantastic accessories company, especially for charging uh, devices and other things. So look at Anker, or what's the other one? Orkey, which is the US version. Okay. Right, let's get into this compartment here. I love the presentation of all this. This is fantastic. So there is, that's the USB-A to USB-C uh, cable. So that'll be for charging the device up. And lastly, we've got, get, I'll get everything out, might as well do that. Let's move that out of the way now, so I don't really need that. These are the AKG tuned earbuds. Now, usually whenever um, mobile phone manufacturers include earbuds with their, with their product, I'm always a bit skeptical about how they sound because usually they sound absolutely terrible. But the fact that these are AKG, and I've heard that AKG are actually a very reputable brand in terms of audio. 
Now, I like my audio. I'm going to give these a try to see what they're like. I don't like in earbuds. I hate them. But I do not like that. I hate the fact they're not very comfortable. They are really, really uncomfortable, in my opinion. Sound wise, they're not brilliant. But I'm going to tr at least try these ones out. So, there is that. So, let's now get this out of the cover. And let's have a look around the device itself. So on the front, there's the screen, which is which wraps all the way around the edges. Very, very nicely indeed. You've got very thin bezels at the top and bottom, which I really don't mind at all. That's one of the front facing speakers as well as an earpiece. You've got the sensors and the camera. On the bottom, yep, yeah, there is the three and a half mil jack connector. Samsung still recognize the fact that we have some audio products that need that connector. Thank you, Samsung. Uh, there's a USB-C connector, the microphone for uh, calls, and one of the rear firing speakers down there. Is that a knock? That better not be. I paid good money for this. Uh, so on this side, we have the lock button. And that's about it. The top, there is the, well, it looks like another microphone, I'm guessing. And that's where the SIM removal tray is there. And then on this side, we have uh, the volume rocker and the dedicated Bixby button. Now, I don't know how Bixby is going to be in my personal opinion, but I'm, I'm going to at least try using Bixby just to see how I get on. Okay, on the back, we have, of course, the Samsung logo. That's the label I'm going to remove because it's just going to ruin the whole uniform look of the phone. There's your fingerprint scanner, and then you've got the two cameras. There, The top is the dual aperture uh, lens camera, and that's the telephoto camera. There you've got a flash, heart, heart rate reader, heart rate monitor, whatever, so everything is all there. Now, usually at this point, I do a whole boot up sequence, or in fact, I do what everyone does, do a whole boot up sequence, go through the whole process of getting the phone set up, but let's be honest, you've seen a lot of boot up sequences of any phone in particular, so I don't want to really want to bore you, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go away, set the device up, I'm going to put a film on, alright, I think. I'm just going to put a film on the background, have a listen to it, get everything set up. And in fact, in terms of the film I'm going to watch, I think I'm going to watch that. Yeah, all three Brody films. The Legendary Super Saiyan, Second Coming, and Bio Brody. I just love Dragon Ball Z, okay? <laughs> That's why. Anyway, I'm going to go away, set up my phone, and I think I'm going to come back and then go through some, like, pre-testing I guess or some form of testing uh, yeah let's do that okay so you join me the following day after that whole unboxing thing so I've just had a really good chance to use uh, the Galaxy S9 Plus and I will say first impressions they are this is one of the best phones I've ever used bar none I mean the iPhone was a good phone as I said but this just completely changes how I look at mobile phones nowadays um, the screen this is using the always on display so I've always got the time showing I've always got any notifications showing as well um, and at night as well if I cover it up as well I don't think it'll do it but Anyway, in darkness, it, it will dim down to a more comfortable brightness level, which is really nice to hold. And as the actual screen itself, I'll unlock it for you. That That's another thing as well. This is this is locked at the moment. I'm just going to use it with my fingerprint. Ready? Bam. Done. Unlocked. The actual screen itself is super, super sharp, super crisp, and yet the colours are so vibrant and alive, and they pop out the screen like it's one of the not blah, 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 blah. that's how that's how I think of it anyway but that's thanks to the AMOLED display that's included uh, on the phone itself and there is no color shifting there's no brightness alterations there's nothing which is fantastic on this thing and to access my apps obviously all I have to do is just swipe up and there's all my apps on there at the moment. Uh, I've mainly got all the social stuff, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and all that usual stuff. I have got Twitch on here as well. I think, I've, as I said, I really want to get into streaming again, so that's going to be one thing. Uh, 
Google Play Music works wonders on Android devices. Oh, it's a small one. I should have done this earlier. So there is, there is that all together. Then there's the audio. The audio has been tuned by AKG since uh, Samsung acquired Harman Kardon. Is it Harman Kardon? No, not Harman Kardon. Harman Kardon? Harman Kardon? Harman Kardon? No, ha I'll say Harman in this case. Harman was acquired by Samsung uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know exactly how long it was, but they acquired them. And they are now tuning uh, speakers and even their headphones for Samsung devices. So the headphones that come included, of course, are tuned by AKG. I haven't had a chance to properly test them yet, but I will give it a proper go, even though I hate in-ear earbuds. I absolutely hate their design. Um, but the actual front-facing speakers on this, well, one front-facing speaker on the earpiece and then the bottom firing one down here, is actually of excellent quality. Um, compared to my iPhone, you only had the one bottom firing speaker, which did its job, it didn't do too bad. Whereas this one, it's much clearer. It's a little bit louder, it's not super loud, which is really good. There's hardly any distortion. Um, I haven't had a chance to probably test bass response. Although that said, bass response is decent for a phone. I will definitely say that. And as I said, on the back, obviously, you've got the fingerprint reader there, you've got the dual cameras, the two 12 megapixel cameras, one being the dual aperture lens, and the other being the telephoto lens. And I love how that's positioned where it should be, right behind where my finger is, that's where my finger naturally lies, even the heart rate monitor's right there as well. Um, and again, that's the thing, Samsung apps, haven't had the proper chance to test that yet, um, but I will do eventually, when I've actually had some more time with the phone. This is just an initial impression of an, a proper average consumer point of view. I mean, this is not like your average consumer, he does an excellent job of reviewing phones. Whereas this is more just someone who is interested in the phone and actually bought it for their own personal needs. Oh, if you're wondering what case uh, this is, by the way, this is actually a case from Spigen. It's called their Rugged Armour case. I bought this off, off Amazon for about nine quid. So it's not too bad of a case for the money. I did actually order a proper Samsung Alcantara case to go with this but that hasn't turned up yet. That should be arriving Monday, so I'll put that on and I'll give that a proper chance. Now let's talk about those cameras. These, this is the best smartphone camera I have ever seen. I actually went out on a walk last night, I, which is what I normally do every night without fail. I go for a walk just to chill out and listen to my music and just relax as best I can. And I actually took a couple of photos on that route where it's under street lighting, so we've got in here in our country at the moment. We've got some areas where the street lighting is still the um, amber colours. The oh, excuse me, Ooh, that's a bit weird. Um, it's still the amber colours at the moment, and you've got some areas which are under white LED street lighting. And I've taken pictures in both of those scenarios. No joke, I could see more from the camera than I could see with my own eyes. That is how much light can be let in thanks to that dual aperture. So it was all the way down to the 1.5 aperture, so it was letting in the most light possible, and it shows. It really does show. In fact, what I'll do, I'll put some uh, pictures up over the top of this while I'm talking so you can actually see them for yourselves. Um, and as for daylight shots, daylight shots are amazing as well. The detail and the clarity, it's just amazing. <laughs> Full stop. It's just absolutely outstanding. So, have I made the right choice? Have I made the right choice going back to Android? Well, I'll have to see in a few weeks' time, I reckon. So, give it a chance. I will actually get used to this again. So, with all that said, here's one thought I do have. If you are going from the Samsung Galaxy S8 to the Samsung Galaxy S9, you're probably not going to notice that much of a difference. Whereas if you're going from a much older device, like in my case, an iPhone 6S Plus, to this, you are definitely 100% going to notice. So, as I said, I've still got a little bit more testing to do. I really want to get used to this device properly. I've still got to 
sync it up to my car actually I'm gonna quickly do that but I think after that I'll actually give a full I might do a full sort of review ish I guess just to see how I get on so with that said thank you for checking out the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and the all the random crap that I've been mentioning about it so there is that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Just look at that. Look at that. That's just how snappy that is. Let me just do that again. Ready? Just one more time. Wonderful.